Hey guys, OJL Biney, bringing you guys our DDL Season 1 Week 1 game against Skyrander and his Scandinavian Salons. Now, unfortunately, I am bringing this to you guys as a uh, post cop, and I'm letting you guys know this right now just because when I played this game, it was kind of right after I got my original, uh, my new computer uh, and all that stuff originally, so I didn't really have all you know, everything figured out and getting it set up for the audio and all that good stuff, and I went back and watched it recently, and the audio is terrible. You can't hear me, and you can only hear the game, and that's obviously not fun to watch. So, what we're going to be doing is I'm going to be doing a team builder and then a uh, post comp of the match afterward. Oop. Let's see that. Okay, cool. So, we're going to be doing that. Uh, it'll probably be the only post comp of the season. I'm not a big fan of doing post comps on the Switch if I don't have to, but it is what it is, at least for this week and all that good stuff. But it is a very good game, so I'm excited to bring it to you guys nonetheless. But... With that being said, let's just jump right into it because we got a bunch to go over between the team building and the battle. Uh, and I do want to do a quick little team builder just so you can see what we're bringing and why we're bringing it in. So you have a little bit of context going into the game and stuff like that. Definitely go check out Skyrim down below though if you haven't done so already. He's a very cool dude. He does plenty of Wi-Fi content and all that good stuff. That's what floats your boat if you're interested in that stuff. Um, but yeah, our team, if you did forget or you haven't seen the draft analysis, which definitely go watch it. will be in the description below. Uh, consists of Keldeo, Scizor, Dugtrio, Drapion, Rotomo, Talonflame, Dublade, Orbeetle, Rhydon, Drampa, and G-Max, Alcremi. While my opponent, his team, consists of Halucha, Rillaboom, Zeraora, Grimmsnarl, Chandelure, Duraladon, ooh, that was awful, Barbarical, Claydol, Ninjas, Wigglytuff, and G-Max, Toxtricity. Now, the things that scare me the most, off-rip. Uh, Halucha can be very scary in the endgame if I let my tech get uh, weakened. I do have great checks to it. I have a Dewblade, I have a uh, Scizor, which is a good check. I have a G-Max Alcremi, a G-Max Fairy type, which can just max up and lift pretty much any hit and all that good stuff. So we have options for it, it's just the sense that I don't have the best options for it. I have to be careful about it, so... Obviously, we're gonna have to make sure we position ourselves to where we still have our checks for that endgame. Oh, and we have Talonflame with uh, Gale Wings and stuff like that, but we're gonna have to position ourselves is the main thing. Rillaboom can be very annoying if we lose our Scizor or our Talonflame, depending on what we bring. If we bring both, you obviously see we have Scizor, but I guess we'll get into the rest in a minute. Um, Zeraora, I don't have switch for Zeraora. The other two are scary in the endgame if I lose my checks. Zeraora kind of picks one every time it comes in if it puts the right button, which is very very scary so we're gonna have to be very careful on that but i'm hoping we can kind of position ourselves to set up for an endgame before that thing starts coming in and clicking buttons um and regardless we have ways of trapping that in trio which we'll get to in a second as well um and then the last big threat biggest biggest threat is going to be chandelure this pokemon i got nothing for i could have brought in drampa and thinking back maybe drampa would have been a good bring because it would have checked the real boom as well but fighting move obviously blows me backwards um because without drampa being there we get demolished by Chandelure. We do not have anything for that thing to do stuff. Our entire team is 2-8 KO by Star Chandelure. So again, we're going to have to be very careful in that thing. But other than that, I think we have a great matchup. We have some things we really put in a lot of pressure on my opponent's team. And uh, yeah, let's jump into it. So, first off, we're going to have our Scizor rocking out with the Lumberry. Technician has the ability Bullet Punch, U-Turn, Roost, and Sand Tomb. Eevees wise, we are rocking out with... I apologize for the team pulled up. Let's see. Max HP, 132 attack, 84 defense, force for death, and 36 speed with an adamant nature. Now, this thing is going to be our designated lead. The lead, reason I'm going to lead... Oh, it's going to be my lead if I see Rillaboom. If I see Rillaboom, I'm going to lead this because I want to put myself in the best possible position versus that thing so that I can always get momentum and U-turn out. The reason that we're Lumberry is because I really expect uh, Flame Body Chandelure to come, and if I want to U-turn out on that thing coming in, I don't want to be burned because that really neuters us in the end game. Bullet Punch is obviously just for general stab to do some damage to things, U-turn for momentum, it hits the Rillaboom very hard as well. And then Sand Tomb is a really cool option. So if you look at my opponent's team, he does not have great ground resist. His ground immunity is Claydol and Halucha, I guess. Um, and Ninjas, it's not a Pokemon, we're not talking about that one. Uh, and the rest of his team, all of his switches to Scizor do not appreciate getting hit with a Technician Sand Tomb, especially with the trapping afterward. Toxtricity actually gets O-Code if it is not Gigantamax up, which is really, really nice for us. Um, Duraludon doesn't appreciate it. We actually 1v1 Duraludon pretty easy with this set, like, very easily. Chandler takes about 50 on the switch in. Um, Zeraora does not appreciate it either. Eventually it'll be chipped in the range of Bullet Punch, which is really nice. So I think Sand Tomb is a really cool tech on this thing. Just to potentially be able to trap and eliminate something with our Scizor, opposed to our, you know, actual trapping ground type. So I think, um, Sizz is very, very good in this game. It's very important, uh, despite there being a whole Chandelure there. It does a great, great job versus the majority of my opponents, too. Next up, we have our Dublade. We're rocking out with the Eviolite. 
um, No Guard Ability, Swords Dance, Shadow Sneak, Gyro Ball, and Shadow Claw. EVs wise, we are rocking out with 244 HP, 124 Attack, 140 Spadef <coughs> with a relaxed nature. Now this thing is going to be our Halucha check. We don't have much for it other than this, but at plus two we should always Oko a Halucha with Gyro Ball, which is obviously really nice. This is a great late game win con as well. It's great for taking off Chandelier. It's great for, you know, picking off a Grimstar. We can always shoot hit from that thing very easily. It's good for uh, picking off a Weakened Zero Aura, which is nice. We check a Rillaboom very, very well. The only thing that really, like, easily breaks us is going to be Chandelure breaks us very easily, Toxtricity breaks us very easily, and um, Grimstar, depending on the set, can actually break through us pretty well. But obviously, if you want to take a Gyro Ball, nothing really wants to take a hit from our Dewblade, and this thing is going to be very important in keeping to the end game so that we do not lose to the Halucha, um, which is going to be its main, main goal here. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be Dewblade, pretty, pretty straightforward. And then we're going to have our Creamy rocking out with the Love Ball. Aroma Veil Ability, Dazzling Gleam, Astro Armor, Recover, and Calm Mind. EVs wise, we're rocking out with 244 HP, 52 Defense, 68 Special Attack, 100 Speed Def, and 44 Speed with a bold nature. Now, you're going to see later on, we do have Doug Tree on the team, and this thing is our win con due to Doug Tree. Now, my game plan is to trap Toxtricity as soon as humanly possible. That is the only thing that stops this set from winning in my mind. I don't think he has much for it. Otherwise, Tox obviously can't be Shed Shell, it can't be Shuga, so even if it's Gigantamax up, when we click High Horsepower Earthquake versus that thing, we will be able to knock it out. And then from there, the only other fairy resist on my opponent's team is Chandelure, which we actually set up on pretty easily, uh, especially if it's not like Specs or Life Orb or anything like that. We're like taking nothing from a Shadow Ball because of our fast death set. So we actually set up on that thing. Uh, my, the majority of my opponent's team is physical too, so getting up an Ask Starter means we wall half of his squad, which is really, really nice. And uh, obviously, Dazzling Gleams are going to start hurting. Where Dazzling Gleam over Draining Kiss just for damage reasons, it uh, lets us break through Chandelure a lot easier, and you know, we won't have to risk as many Spit F drops and crits and things like that, which obviously wouldn't be a good time um, in the slightest, in all honesty. But this thing does really well, and when we G Max up, we'll get it. We'll be getting like a pseudo Draining Kiss. Obviously phenomenal. This is a good, you know, one-time check to Halucha too. If we need to max up with a hit and dazzling gleam it away, we can definitely do so, which I think is obviously amazing for us. Um, but yeah, game plan for this game is going to be trap the what do you call it? The Toxtricity with our Doug Trio, and then be able to win with our Alcreamy later on. Speaking of, here he is. This is our Doug Trio, rocking out the choice scarf and ring trap ability, earthquake, high horsepower, memento, aerial ace. EVs wise got max HP, I mean max attack, 28 defense, and 228 speed with 8 jolly nature. This thing is here to trap Tox, it's here to trap a potential Zero Aura, it's here to trap a potential Chandelure. Uh, I can't trap Chandelure, I'm just kidding, it's a ghost type. I learned that in Lux, oops. Uh, it's here to trap Duraludon and Barbarical and a bunch of things. Like I said, my opponent's team is very ground weak, and despite it having terrain, you obviously have a high horsepower option to be able to hit that thing very, very hard, which is obviously, uh, you know, phenomenal in itself. So. Dougie is here, literally just to trap those things, potentially Memento into Alcremi later on in the game. Air release is nice as the Halucha and the Rillaboom if we really need to, but in all honesty, all we're going to be clicking is Earthquake and Irish Power uh, for the majority of this game. So, like I said, very, very simple. Trap, uh, you know, threats to Alcremi so that Alcremi can win this game, because it does so very, very well, um, if I can't get rid of the toss, especially. Next up, we have our Talon Flame. We're rocking out with the Heavy Duty Boots, Gale Wings is the ability, Dual Wing Beat, Bulk Up, Boost, and Flare Blitz. EVs wise, we got 188 HP, 132 attack, 4 defense, 60 speed def, and 124 speed with a jolly nature. This is a good backup check to Halucha, so we can always have that priority dual wing beat if we get a hit off on it. We should put it in range of a dual wing beat, which is obviously phenomenal. It's a great Rillaboom check, um, and it's a great potential win con if we can get rid of the Zero Aura. The Zero Aura isn't Sugar Berry, it's not Shed Shell. If we can trap that thing with an Earthquake, uh, obviously, because we'll be faster than it with our uh, Twitch Scarf. And then we'll be able to really go in on my opponent's team. Obviously, Barbarical takes us on very well, but I don't necessarily expect Barbarical just because we have a lot for it. Um, we have a lot for Barbarical, actually. I really don't expect that thing to come. Uh, but otherwise, we do amazingly with this thing, and it's a great, great potential late game with if we can get rid of Zero Aura. And like I said, it's a great check to the you know physically offensive core of Hollow Trooper, which is really, really important. So actually, my especially a good check up to Rillaboom because of the fact it doesn't get any rock coverage whatsoever. Next up, we have Keldeo. We are rocking out with the Choice Scarf, Justified Ability, Scald, Flip Turn, Air Slash, and Aura Sphere. EVs wise, we're rocking out with 100 HP, 4 Defense, 220 Special Attack, 4 Speed Death, and 180 Speed with a modest 
nature. This thing is just gives a good speed control. Gives us a good revenge killer for Chandelure. If we have, you know, we have options to pivot into Scarf Chandelure. If he thinks he's Scarf, we can two it KO easily. Um, you know, with like if he's Scarf Modest or something like that, we can obviously, you know, knock him out with a Scald, which is really, really phenomenal in this matchup. Uh, it gives good, good momentum and flip turn, which is really, really great. And kind of baiting in the Rillaboom a bunch and really putting my opponent into a vortex where. I go Keldeo, and I flip turn as they go Rillaboom, I go into Scizor, I get the U-turn again as they go out into, say, their Chandelure, or they go out into their Toxtricity because they can take a hit or something like that. That's when I get in Dougie, and that's when I can start dropping things and doing really well, so I think the momentum is really important. Or Sphere just for fighting steps so we can hit the Duraludon a little bit harder. Um, and we have a neutral move for Rillaboom. I apologize, I'm about to yawn. Uh, and then Air Slash is good for the Halicha and the Robo being able to hit those things. Scald is great to spam over to my opponent's team and nothing wants to take a burn. So we can kind of spam that freely and he doesn't really switch into it all that well, which is obviously phenomenal. But uh, yeah, that's going to be the team. I will be right back with the match. Alright guys, here we are with the battle. You obviously know the team I'm bringing if you watched the team builder before, but if not, you can see it on your screen. Um, and as for the team that Skyrender is bringing, he's going with the Zeror, the Wigglytuff, the Halucha, Rillaboom, Chandelure, and Toxtricity. Nothing really too out of the ordinary except for the Wigglytuff. I'm not going to lie to you, I did under prep for Wiggly just a little bit, which obviously isn't the smartest thing in the world. Um, and you're going to see here in the battle I make a really dumb mistake but other than that I think we're pretty well prepared for everything like I said in the team builder my lead of choice is definitely always going to be scissor the reason being I don't want to let a free Rillaboom lead just pop off against me and all that good stuff so with that being said I do have the liberty of just fast forwarding which is amazing which is okay cool so we're gonna jump into leads we're gonna see that he ends up with toxtricity as we lead off with our scissor now in my head I'm thinking Okay, this is fine. I can still get off a U-turn, and I can potentially get the Dougie and trap this thing immediately. One thing I didn't keep in mind, which I probably should have, and uh, this is definitely a blunder on my end, is him potentially being Max Flare with Fire Punch. I don't know if it necessarily would have knocked us out, but it is something I wanted to, uh, I should have, you know, taken into account Calc or something like that. After I clicked it, I was kind of like, oh crap, this might be bad. I might lose this are really, really early. Um, but regardless, him leaving this in, means that I will get the trap with Dougie, and that means in the end game I still will be good to win with my out creamy. Um, the Rillaboom becomes a little bit more iffy, we still do have Talonflame to check that thing which is obviously nice, it's just we're not going to be able to grab as much momentum um, throughout the game with our Scizor with if it ends up going down. So he's going to G-Max up as he goes for the Max Strike and this is completely fine. I'm going to freaking chew this up, this is going to do nothing, it's going to be way less than Boomer would have done to us and we're just going to be able to get a big big slow u-turn on out and uh be able to get into our dougie and regardless of his hp investment uh unless he's like max physically defensive he is not going to be able to take this earthquake ever actually i don't think he ever took an earthquake literally ever from this range uh no matter what his strength was so we're going to be able to go into dougie right here pop out of the ground and we're going to be able to trap this thing in and basically just go for a free, free Earthquake and knock this thing out. Like I said, this is my game plan for the entire game. It's getting into a position where I could trap the Toxtricity and be able to eliminate this thing for our uh, Alcremie to really put in a lot of work. So down goes the Tox due to Earthquake. This is amazing. We immediately get rid of a big threat to our team and a big, big threat to our win con. So Doug Trio has done its job in my mind. It could go down immediately after this <coughs> and I would be completely, completely fine. So, the only iffy thing is this is going to allow in the Rillaboom, uh, which is going to be a little bit annoying because we can get put in a little bit of a vortex when it comes to pivoting around and U-turning and all that good stuff. So, we're going to have to be a little bit more careful about that. Uh, but if we can grab a little bit of momentum going forward, uh, we should be okay. So, like I said, out comes the Rillaboom. It's a little bit annoying, but I still do have a very healthy scissor that can take any two hits of the thing, minus the fact that it might be like life orb, but I don't expect that in this matchup. It would make too much sense if I have a scissor when I have a talent flame and all that good stuff. Be a little bit counterintuitive to the team. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna immediately pivot out into scissor. I don't wanna sack Dougie just yet because of the fact that it is uh, a good option for the switch out there or later on. So a knockoff's gonna come off. It's gonna do a decent amount to our scissor. It's gonna get rid of our lumberry, which is a bit annoying when it comes to the Chandelure because we can potentially get burned on a U-turn now, but not the biggest deal. I am going to go for this U-turn this turn. It's incredibly, incredibly free. 
at this point, just being able to you turn on out and get into a big, big threat afterwards, which is uh, obviously great. So, obviously the U-turn's gonna come out on the Rillaboom, this is really valuable information, I know that it's not Scarf now, and I know that he's not a boosting item, obviously because the damage he's doing will for. Well, he might be like an extra belt, I guess, but it wouldn't make too much sense versus me. Uh, but we know for a certain, for a fact, he's not like Life Orb, he's not Bandit, he's not Scarf, anything like that, he's not locked into anything. So. As the Chandelure comes out, we are going to U-turn out this turn. I wish I had rocked on this build, because it would punish this a lot more, but it's honestly fine. I wanted to have the dual um, options for Dougie here in the back. So what I'm going to do is this is going to let me to go into Keldeo, and this is kind of what I talked about in my draft analysis, kind of what I talked about in the team board a little bit, where Scizor and Keldeo are going to form a phenomenal uh, flip turn U-turn core here, in the sense that it's going to just kind of force things in and around to where we can eventually position ourselves in a really, really good spot. <laughs> against our opponent and uh you know potentially put a lot of, a lot of hurt on so what's gonna happen right here is i'm just gonna flip turn out even if this thing stays in uh it's gonna take a freaking ton and obviously i'm just gonna be able to get out and, you know pivot around and just get it back in and flip turn again so i'm not too worried about this thing staying in even if he does make a really really aggressive play so i don't think it'd be a very good one uh we'd be in a good spot but instead of the rillaboom coming out he ends up going the wiggly tough and i guess this makes sense if it's a bulkier wiggly especially with like wish or something like that It'll stop it from potentially being um, scald burned. Like I mean, the the real boom from being scald burned and stuff like that, which is obviously really really nice for us in itself. And uh, it puts us in a little bit more of an iffy situation where we can't just start flip turning and volt turning around on everything, which is obviously pretty crazy. But this is gonna allow me to go into my talent flame. This thing gets pretty much nothing to do with talent flame, even if it gets like rock slide for some reason or rock tomb. I am bulk up, so I will be able to you know kind of boost past this thing pretty easily. And really take it on well but what I'm gonna do right here is I'm actually going to make a double I'm gonna double out expecting the zero aura to come in because it is a pretty good check to this thing initially um, and gonna be able to you know obviously threaten me out afterwards which is obviously really, really scary so I am gonna double out because I figured he can't really beat me one for one go into my Doug trio on uh, the wiggly right here he actually ends up going for a counter <laughs> which is a good deck I mean I suppose I would have personally bulked up if I, you know, went into this initially anyways, but it's all good. Regardless, I'm just going to throw off a big memento. Now, you're going to see me click memento, and you, you might be seeing where I messed up, where I underprepped like crazy for the Wigglytuff. Um, obviously, Wigglytuff is competitive. I've used Wigglytuff in the past. It's not that I've never seen it have competitive before, but I was so underprepared for it, and I wasn't really thinking, and I got a little bit of gun call because I was thinking, oh, word. I trapped this thing, I'm Memento, I go into Alcremie, I set up, and I win. If he had Toxic, he probably would have clicked it on my Talon plan. So in my head, I'm like, oh word, I win the game. I just need to, you know, position myself correctly right here. So what I'm going to do is click Memento. And obviously, this isn't going to work out very good for us. This is going to be pretty bad for us, in all honesty, because of the fact that it gets plus two when we drop its attack. <coughs> Not good, right? It's plus two. Then, it gets plus two when we drop its special attack. Which means it's essentially at plus two special attack right now. We gave this Wigglytuff a nasty plot boost, which is not very smart. We gave it a nasty plot boost for getting rid of our trio. Probably one of the dumbest plays I've made in a while. It was it was actually pretty funny. I'm gonna live comment started laughing. So I was like, dang, oh, you're an idiot. Um, so what I'm gonna have to do right here, I can't even really go Talon because this thing can actually potentially break through depending on its coverage. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go Scizor. Because while I know this thing lives a bullet punch, I'm going to be able to bullet punch it down into range of a potential talent flame hit or really anything else on my team. So I figured that that would be beneficial in its own right as I'm going to go into it right here. And what I'm going to do is just throw off a big, big bullet punch trying to do a good amount of damage to this guy right here. You know, and uh, potentially put it in a range of things. So I think I'm fine with trading this as well at this point. I know I messed up, but it's not the biggest deal in the world. As he is going to switch out into the... Um, Chandelure, which is again completely fine. We, uh, as long as we don't get burned, we're still in a pretty decent spot. We're not, you know, just like, again, lost game, lost cause type thing. As we do get burned, which is nice. And I'm gonna pivot into my Keldeo, because, <coughs> excuse me, with my Keldeo's investment, I can actually always take two Scarf Timid Shadow Balls, which I do believe he has to be timid in this matchup, but it lets me at least scout for damage. Let's see what kind of item he is, what potential kind of nature he is, and all that good stuff. So, Shadow Ball is gonna come out. He's gonna do a decent amount to Big Keld right here. But we see that he is timid, and this makes me think he's not a boosting item. He could still be Scarf, he could be something else. Regardless, my play is to flip turn. I guaranteed outspeed this thing, and I get a little bit of momentum going forward, which is obviously phenomenal for me. 
So yeah, we're gonna just flip turn on out of this uh, Chandelure, see exactly what he wants to go into. He can go to Rillaboom, but again, you could be a little bit afraid of the Scald Burn, that obviously wouldn't be a good time. Uh, being burned by skull but this thing continues much less threatening offensively to my team much less threatening offensively but he's gonna end up going out into the weekly tough and this is completely fine because once again i am getting good momentum on this thing I'm getting uh you know switch in and out pretty pretty freely here at this point so we're gonna be able to flip turn out and at this point i am going to go into scissor because i felt a he showed that he didn't really want to stay in and let this thing take a bunch of chip last time for the bolt one Maybe he'll do the same because he is a little bit worried about the Keldeo. And I overplay a tiny, tiny bit right here. And I end up going for a Sand Tomb trying to get to Chandelure. Because in my head, I'm like, I don't have Switch and Chandelure. This is a good opportunity for him to get it in. And I'm just going to obviously Sand Tomb it and uh, try and trap it and get a good 50% off on it. Because I think that would be super clutch. But unfortunately, he is going to end up staying in. And this shows me, tells me that he for sure has Fire Blast or Flamethrower or something like that. Fire Blast is going to come out. He's going to clean knock out our scissor, but this is honestly fine. I got a little bit of chip off on the Wiggly Tough. And what this is going to allow me to do is get a free switch into my upgrade because at this point, I really don't think he has Toxic. I think he has Stab. I think he has um, Counter. He has Fire Blast. And I'm just thinking maybe like Wish is the last move or something like that. Something similar. Uh, but that's going to let us go out into Alcremie and really start setting up and really, really putting some pressure on my opponent, which is obviously uh, phenomenal for us. So what we're going to do is we are going to call mind up right here as I take a look at what's left just to make sure the talks is gone. See, is there anything we can do? Uh, no, we're going to acid armor because the rest of his team was kind of physical that could really threaten me offensively afterwards. So if you want to make an aggressive switch in the Brilla Boom or Zero or something like that, it definitely couldn't do it. Kill me. But unfortunately, he's going to go Chandelure. This is completely fine as I am going to acid armor up and get it to plus two defense. I know this thing isn't a boosting item. I know I can call mind all over this thing and really take it on pretty easily. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to switch out into my Keldeo. The reason I go Keldeo is because I want to scout for Trick on the uh, Chandelure. See if it's Trick Scarf. Because if it's Trick Scarf, that pretty much starts our sweep in its tracks. We don't have much for it otherwise at that point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go Keldeo. I am going to uh, take a big Shadow Ball from this thing. Which shows me that he probably doesn't have Trick. If he does, he knew I would scout for that turn. Great play on his end. Phenomenal play on his end, which is uh, obviously not the funnest thing. But what I'm going to do is just click flip turn. Again, obviously, you turn on out and get me some good momentum again. And now, next time my Alchemy comes in, I think I'm a little bit more safe to potentially set up and try and go for game with that guy right there. So, again, we're going to flip turn. I'm assuming he's uh, kind of contemplating this play, seeing whether or not he wants to make. Uh, the aggressive plan stand on a flip turn and potentially throw off a big shadow ball because we don't have a shadow ball pivot anymore. But again, I don't think that's his best play. I think he still has great checks this thing. Uh, and keeping the health on Chandler can be really nice for the upgrade. So, at least in his mind. So I'm thinking he's potentially going to uh, obviously switch out into either his Wiggly Tough or his Rillo Boom. As he does end up switching into the Wiggly. And obviously, I'm just going to flip turn on out, get a little bit more chip off on this guy. And this is going to be my opportunity to get in my upgrade in my mind. Because all I have to do is start setting up. Um, this thing really can't break through me literally ever. I should be always faster than it unless it's like max speed, timid, wiggly. Um, maybe. I don't exactly know the speed tiers on that, but maybe he could potentially outspeed me. But all I have to do here is set up an ass armor, set up a calm mind and then just kind of mono dazzling gleam through my opponent's team so we're going to set up an ass armor first because like i said the majority of my opponent's team is physical at this point and i want to make sure i can take hits from those things the best as well so we're thinking about it a little bit i believe i'm kind of contemplating again called mind on the shade lure coming in because that was just threat uh, his switch in last time or acid armor on the uh, physical threat coming in uh, but I do end up going with the Acid Armor because I know I can still sit up on that Chandelure. I'm not super worried about it in the slightest in all honesty. As he does end up switching out right into the Chandelure. And again, this is completely fine. Because like I said, <coughs> I set up on this thing perfectly. Like, uh, amazing. And once I get to plus one even, I 2 it KO it with uh, G Max Finale and I get health back as I do it, which is amazing. So what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to click Calm Mind. I'm going to start boosting past this thing. I can Calm Mind and recover. I Calm Mind and Calm Mind and recover. And then pretty much win the game from there. As he does go for a Shadow Ball, showing he does not have the chick most, Trick most likely, but he gets a Spadef Drop. This is pretty unfortunate, because this is going to make it to where this uh, next Shadow Ball is still doing a lot. It's going to force me into a recovery turn. It's going to force me to recover a little bit more. But 
in all honesty, it doesn't matter too much because all I do is just recover the damage off and then I call mine again after and then recover it off and then start call mine. So it just puts a little bit more time into my uh, potential sweep. As I am going to recover again, all I need is for him not to get a crit here or not to get a spadef drop again. Don't want that. As he is going to go for a shadow ball and you're going to see, unfortunately, he gets off some big damage and he gets off another spadef drop. Which is obviously great. Uh, that's phenomenal. So now we're at minus one. And I'm thinking, crap. What do I do? This is my win con, and I'm in a phenomenal position. He doesn't have any other special attackers outside of this, so looking at the cow, my GMX finale does two hit KO this thing at plus one. I was kind of contemplating on the switch out. Don't have one. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to Dynamax on up, or Gigantamax up, and throw off a bunch of GMAX finales. Hopefully, two hit KOing this thing and um, you know, being able to beat the rest of my opponent, because I can call mind all over the what do you call it? The wiggly tough. I'm fast and it doesn't matter. And the rest of my opponent's team is physical, and I should do a lot of damage every game plus one anyway. So we should be in a good spot regardless, provided we get this 2 8 KO off, because we're gonna get a little bit of health back as we do this anyways. So we're gonna Gigantamax up, obviously get big on him, and uh, you know, be able to throw off a bunch of G-Max finales, which is very, very clutch. And we're still pretty decently healthy in all honesty. We're not like super low at this point. So Shadow Ball's gonna come out, it's gonna do significantly less despite us being at minus one. And I'm going to throw off a big G-Max value. You're going to see this is definitely a clean 2-hit KO from this range. And we're going to get pretty much all the health back that we took from that last Shadow Ball right back into our HP. Which is, again, phenomenal because after this next turn, we should be able to 2-hit KO this thing and knock it out. And then she'll have one more turn of G-Max where we will knock something else out in return. Which is obviously amazing. Uh, but he's going to reveal the plane split. Now, this is a really cool bring on Skyrim's part. It's great. It's selling out my G-Max turns with my Alcremi. Being able to, um, obviously, we can be down a little bit and get himself a little bit more health to where he's actually going to be out of range of our next hit right here. However, you're going to see, I'm going to throw off a G-Max Finale, and I am going to crit him. Now, I know this sucks, especially from Skyrim's point of view, because in his head, he's like, wow, I, you know, kind of just wasted that turn. I could have, you know, potentially gotten a big crit off and done more damage or something like that. But, I think... It's kind of divine justice. I don't think that crit would have needed to happen if I wouldn't have gotten double split after drops because I could have set up to a point where he couldn't have pain split off that damage anyways, and I'd be doing ridiculous amounts of damage at plus two or plus three. So, in all honesty, I think that's kind of just the game leveling itself out off of you know me getting hacked out a little bit earlier on when I was trying to set up with this thing. Um, it's just a little bit of divine justice in my opinion, but this is going to put him in a really tough spot because he does not have anything to break this now. When I'm plus two defense and Gigantamaxed up, there's nothing that is going to be able to one, break through me, and two, be able to uh, take hits from me well at all. So you're going to see the Zero Orb is going to come out next. This is honestly completely fine, as I'm just going to throw off GMX Finale. If he's no bulk, it's actually my favorite to knock him out, but I assume him to have bulk because it's a Zero Aura, and you don't need to run max speed ever. Uh, so he's going to throw off a bulk up, which is completely fine, because obviously he's not even us, and we're going to get a bunch of health back. Pretty much probably get it back up to full afterwards because of GMX Finale, and we're going to throw off a big hit, and if we can somehow get a, like, maybe a low roll to knock him out, that'd be great. Unfortunately, we're just going to miss out on that KO. Again, not too mad about that. I don't even think the roll's in our favor if he had any bulk at all, so... Honestly, we'll take that. That's all good. It's great damage, and this thing is in range of our next as uh, like crazy. It's bulking up was a smart play in his end, though, because if you can get a crit right here, he will knock us out. <coughs> but regardless of my play, this is dazzling. And with this thing being chipped, our talent flame also goes in the back as well, so I'm not super worried about this in all honesty. As the Plasma Fist is going to come out, he's going to do a big chunk, but it's not going to crit us. We're going to get off a big dazzling gleam. And down goes the Zero Aura. Now, all that's left is going to be Wigglytuff, which we call mind all over. Uh, the Halusha, which we just Dazzling Gleam, and the Rillaboom, which we can recover and then Ass Armor again and then Call Mind and then Dazzling Gleam, Dazzling Gleam, Dazzling Gleam. So, from this position, provided we don't get crit, we're actually in a phenomenal position versus my opponent. So, out comes the Rillaboom. Grassy's here just gonna pop. This is fine because it's honestly giving me extra recovery, and unless it crits me, none of this really matters, in all honesty. <coughs> so, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually recover this turn, just so that I'm not in range of 2, or anything like that, or after a recover I would be at a range of crit potentially as well, which is obviously really, really nice, so I figured that's probably my best play at this point, to, uh, you know, maybe take it a little bit slower and not be as fun to watch, but it'll give me, uh, you know, more ample opportunity to win this game with just Alcremi and save some gift, actually, as we're gonna get the recover off, and then we're gonna get some grass to train it. Like I said, the rest of the range really help us out at this point. It's like a pseudo leftover, which is nice. And then this turn, I'm just going to throw off an Ass Armor. Because what this does is it lets me uh, really take these hits really, really easily. Yes, one more Flash Spread's going to come out. Still doing a decent chunk to me. 
and I am going to Astro Armor once again. Get the plus four defense, which means that Halucha is never breaking for me. And at this point, I just recover up one more time, and I can start throwing off some dazzling things and be in an amazing, amazing spot. So we're just gonna quick recover just in case, so we can get out of range of crit if we really, really need to. And uh, from there, it's pretty much just clicking Calm Mind and Dazzling Gleam and potentially winning the game and stuff. But unfortunately, Sky Ranger is going to cancel the game, uh, realizing that he probably couldn't win that one. Um, without a crit or anything like that, though I think maybe let's just play the stay and try and get crit, because again, maybe you could have put something back, though I think our Talon Flame in the back definitely won the Talon at that point as well, which we will definitely, definitely, definitely take at this point. So, uh, GG's to him. I know that's not the funnest way to lose to a really fat, bulky, annoying setup on, but I figured it was my best win con in this specific matchup, and, uh, you know, being able to trap the Tox that early on really helped me facilitate that so that's kind of what i was talking about in my draft analysis where how creamy is amazing with that w because the fact that you can trap those poison steel types and stuff like that they really stop it from going crazy on my opponent so again jesus skyrunner definitely go check my description below thank you guys so much for watching if you're new here be sure to drop a sub if you enjoyed the video be sure to drop a like with that being said i am going to get out of here i'll see you guys in the next one later